But let's start um, with the window yep. that everybody loves quoting, like, oh, look, they spent this much. and they, they, I, I think we need to, first of all, absolute spend doesn't really, gross spend no, doesn't really matter. Spend. You need to look at the We've net said spend, that many right? times. We've said it many times. Yeah. Net spend, Premier League, absolutely out-muscling everybody. <laughs> and so as a result, you have it again coming from the usual suspects in Italy and Spain saying, oh, UEFA need to do something. We need a Super League, blah, blah, blah. And then when you explain, when you ask them, like, how would a Super League fix this? They're like, ah, blah, 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 blah. They don't know. No, it's just they would get more revenue, which they don't get now, which Premier League clubs do, for example. Well, no, only those clubs that would be in the Super yeah, League would sure, get it. But... And by the way, uh, you know, in the Super League parent, six of the uh, clubs in it, that's right. I more mean, than any other country, yeah. were Premier League clubs. So exactly. they'd be getting all the extra money from the Super League well. and then having all the extra money that they get from the Premier League. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to get philosophical about it, but it will. Um, it's not just about money. They can spend more money because they make more money, because they have bigger television contracts, because they have yeah. bigger commercial deals, because whether we like it or not, English is the lingua franca of the world, yeah. and they've been better at selling it. People don't just buy something because yeah. it's high quality. Um, they, selling, uh, selling, selling the stadium every week, everywhere. I, exactly. All these things come into it. And before people you know, come out and say, oh, man, City, financial fair play, fine. Then I can go back and talk about, talk about Qatar, right? Yeah. And Paris Saint-Germain. I can talk about Barcelona and his levers. I can talk about Juventus now having serious issues with, yeah. with false accounting. So, I, I, you know... I want to hear a coherent message. And for me, and you tell me if you agree or disagree, I, don't, I think this becomes a problem that UEFA need to face when English clubs go into Europe and start destroying, not just when these buy more players, yeah. but when they start destroying the opposition on the pitch. And guess what? We're not there yet. No, yet, no, because as we've seen in the last 10 years, you, English clubs don't win the Champions League every single year. Uh, I think they've only won it three times in the last 10 years or something like that. Or yeah, the Europa had, League or the Conference. Yes, yeah, we had a you know, a final between City and Chelsea two years ago. So, okay, I get that. Because Premier League clubs don't spend their money well. You know, the day where they spend their money well, then maybe we can worry because they, they should be much better. However, now this is not the case. But it's true that they've got financial power that others don't have. Javier Tebas can say as much as he wants that Premier League clubs are cheating. They're not cheating. It's their money. They have the money. They spend it. Right. And if you look at the seven clubs that are under scrutiny from FFP right now, none of them are English. You've got PSG, you've got Marseille, right. you've got Italian clubs, you've got Turkish clubs, but because the Premier League's books, even if some clubs lose some money, they've got controlled debts, but they still have debts, but they control. You know, they have that money to spend. So why would you not spend them? I think also a lot of these numbers were inflated by the tremendous amount of spending that one specific English club did. And that club, of course, yeah, yeah. Is, is Chelsea. I have a column up saying that, you know, this is a gamble. It's a gamble on many different levels, um, you know, starting with financial sustainability mm -hmm. regulations, uh, both in the Premier League and, and in Europe. Um, so just from a sporting perspective, I mean, we were talking off air before. They've spent all this money. They've assembled all this young talent. Yeah. Uh, Enzo Fernandez, of course, being, being the, 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 I guess, the, the shining light in yeah. January. Nkunku's coming in the summer. But when we try to make a, like a... A prospective lineup, like a one to eleven lineup, I still see in terms of quality. I still see two major holes yeah. at center forward and in central midfield. Yeah, I think you're right, Gab. I mean, you can sign 18, 18 players between the summer and the and the winter, spend over six hundred million pounds, and still, when you look at it, think like mm, that squad is not complete. You've got great depth, and you've got plenty of options for Graham Potter. Maybe too, maybe too many. Maybe it's too many players. But you still think like, okay, what are you going to do when Lukaku comes back? What do you do as a centre forward? Maybe he's your centre forward. Maybe he's your centre forward. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But, you know, who plays with Enzo? Is Kovacic yeah. good enough? What about Conte? What about Zakaria? What about who do you sign another defensive well, midfielder? This is the thing, right? Conte's contract is expiring. If you can get the real Conte and he's fit, hey, hey fantastic. True. Uh, equally, the guy's played two games a season. Yeah. He should be coming back to training soon. We have no idea what condition he's going to be in. We have no idea if they can extend him, on what terms. Um, you know, they... I think the fact that they went for Caicedo suggests to me that they need a plan B for, for, uh, for Conte. Up front, like I said, I'm not so stuck on labels. Maybe you do a system where Havertz or Nkunku can, can play there or whatever. Yeah, maybe. But 
it does still seem this this is sporting wise this is still very much a work in progress we're going to get into that uh, a lot more also look at some of the numbers also look at some of these complaints from uh, around Europe on the Gavin Jules podcast well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.